Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now, on the channel many times I've alluded to the fact that I really enjoy using a journal to keep track of my life, to set goals and parameters for projects and things that I've got ongoing. In fact, I keep a number of journals on the go at any given time. I've got one here specifically for YouTube, I've got a life journal, and a number of others. And something I would heartily recommend. I've, I've done whole videos on it and I'll link those down below. But when it comes to this art of journaling, um, it requires only sort of two elementary things, doesn't it? It requires a pen and it requires a, a book in which to use as a journal. Now, when I began my journaling journey, um, I used an unbranded notebook, which was you know, virtually of no value whatsoever. And for many years, my pen of choice, when I was a sort of functioning working guy, using a pen each day, was the, uh, the, the Bic ballpoint, you know, the biro pen, the, the pen which has become eponymous. The Bic is the pen which everybody uses. It's cheap, it's rugged, it's reliable. But like everything, as we move through life, part of the enjoyment of our journey is finding things and moving on upwards to better things, moving forwards, you know, embracing maybe more quality and different styles of things. And that's what I'm here to talk about today, because I've moved forward in my journaling sort of direction, and I've encompassed a couple of new things, uh, which I think I'd like to share with you, just to show you how I'm moving along in my path, and it might be something you're interested in too. Now, when it comes to the pen, it has been my pleasure to use the Caveco brand of pens for a number of years now. Uh, and I started off with them, in fact, using a Caveco Sport. Now, this is what they refer to as a pocket pen. In essence, it unscrews, and then you put it into uh, one full size like that, and it becomes a quite capable and very enjoyable fountain pen to write with. I, I always use fountain pens these days, and having a very transportable pen like this, at a very modest price, £20, it has been uh, a revelation, and it started me on my journey with Caveco. Now, after the little plastic one, I moved up, same Caveco Sport, but this time I went for an aluminium, so much stronger, more robust, a bit more weight to it, exactly the same function. You know, you open it up and there you go, ready to rock, ready to write. Um, I've gone for different size nibs over the time, so I had a medium here and a bold nib on this one. I actually much prefer the bold. But after using these pocket pens for a while, and these are ideal as everyday carry, by the way. You can slip them in a trouser pocket and you've got a fountain pen to hand at any time. But most of my journaling, I tend to do at home when I'm sat at my desk. And in situations like that, maybe my little, uh, my pocket pen is, it seems incongruous to the situation. So I decided I wanted to move up to a full size pen and my brand of choice, Caveco, uh, who incidentally, they don't pay me to talk about these pens, they're merely, this is my personal choice, all right? So it's not sponsored or, you know, funded uh, content here. This is me talking about a pen which I've got. Um, when you look through their catalog, there are a few pens which jumped out at me. Now you can probably tell by the way I'm attired that I'm somebody who's somewhat traditional, maybe a little conservative. And the pen which struck me immediately as fitting with my own aesthetic styles was the Caveco Dia 2 or Dia 2. And when you look at it, what struck me immediately, it was somewhat retro in its styling. It's a black resin pen. It's got a little bit of weight to it. There's a fair bit of metal involved in this pen as well. And on first sight, it's relatively small for a full size pen, which is fine for me because I also like to, you know, carry them around, maybe in my, uh, my daily carry bag and things like that. But it's a fairly compact little resin pen and its styling, as I say, lends itself to look very traditional because you've got the black body of the pen and the cap, but the fittings uh, in this particular case, the one which I uh, acquired, is in gold. It's also available with the same fittings in chrome, so it's on personal choice. But we, when we see it, there's a finial on each end, which bears the Caveco seal, the Caveco badge. And as you can see, looking at the body of the pen, there are a number of rings also picked out in gold, which again, I think gives it that sort of 
retro style. You see the Caveco name written on the cap and also on the cap you have this knurling which uh, again gives the suggestion of an older time. Also at the other end of the pen as well the knurling is present there. And a large and engraved uh, clip which is strong, powerful, works well. Uh, also in gold of course with Caveco written upon it. Very styly, very nice. How does the pen work? Well to use it unscrews. So it's a screw-up pen. Again, this gives me confidence in carrying it around that it's not going to come apart in my pocket or anything like that and you know there's not going to be any seepage or leakage. So we unscrew the pen and the cap comes apart from the main body. Now the main body of the pen, as I say, it's got an ever such a slight belly upon it, like a cigar shape, very common to fountain pens. And the, the holding position is very comfortable, very natural. The uh, nib itself will be f familiar to people who use Caveco pens because it's the same nib that is tried and tested on their sport models. And I opted in this instance for a bold size nib. However, they come in, I think, five different sizes. You have uh, extra fine, fine, medium, bold, and extra bold. So you can find your writing choice uh, quite easily. I find the bold, it offers quite a, uh, quite a broad stroke actually, but it's quite wet and easy to write with. Just, it suits my personal style. So in this instance, it's a gold nib. Uh, of course, if you opted for the bronze version, it would have the bronze fittings and the, uh, sorry, not bronze, uh, the uh, chromium nib, it would have chrome nib, chrome fittings. So quite a, uh, a distinctive and smart piece. We open it up and inside the pen is fed using cartridges or you can use a converter. Um, I personally, I'm a bit of a cheapskate, what I tend to do is use a cartridge. Uh, when that cartridge is empty, I will then refill it with ink of my choice. So I tend to use inks which I like myself and buy separately. I like, uh, I like to experiment with different colours. Um, so I use a Caveco proprietary cartridge which when it's been expended of its own ink, I refill it with the ink of my choice. I find that just ultimately easier than using a converter and a, a little bit more, you know, just less likely of getting ink all over the place. You'll notice on the inside of the pen that the fittings are also in, in brass. So there is some solidity to this piece as well. It's a really lovely pen actually. And how does it write? That's the important thing. Well, in the hand, it's a little bit smaller than you would imagine in comparison to some of these big, chunky fountain pens, which are in fashion with some, you know, your Mont Blancs and things like that. But for me, I rather like its size, its slight compactness. The, uh, the cap screws on and off with just one full turn, and it, the cap posts easily and readily on the back of the main body of the pen. And for me, when I'm writing, that extra weight of the cap being posted to the main body of the pen is a lovely counterbalance and it makes writing just that little bit more easy. So in conclusion, I've been very pleased to move up to this Caveco Dia 2. And it is a pen which I write with all the time now. I'm really enjoying this experience. And for me, the bold nib uh, offers, as I say, a very flowing and easy writing experience. Um, but also at the same time, from an aesthetic point of view, I think whereas I really enjoyed my Caveco Sport in its lovely sporty colors, very attractive, but Staying within the Caveco world and moving up really into their sort of big boy pens, um, I've really found this a nice easy transition. Price point, as you can imagine, it's not cheap. What I've described is something which is, you know, um, well constructed, well put together. Caveco, the brand, they go back into the late 18th century. The pens are made, constructed in Germany. And as you know, things made in Germany, cars, washing machines, you name it, they tend to be of the highest engineering quality. And as I would describe that being the case with the Caveco pens, they're made in Heidelberg. Uh, so yeah, a lot of history and heritage there. They do range in price. Um, I mean, if you look at them at full price, you probably find these around about 95 British pounds. With the gold trim, a little bit less, on the chromium trim, it really does depend. Shop around. Look around on the internet. Caveco have a great website themselves, uh, but shop around. Aim for something in the region of 90 pounds-ish, and you won't go far wrong. But it's a great little pen, 
and it has, to a degree, revolutionized my journaling experience. Now, when you talk about journaling, you know, yes, you need a pen, but probably the start of the show is what it's all named after, the journal itself. And for a number of years, I have been uh, a fan of moleskin, uh, and recently, maybe last year, I traded up to Leuchtturm. Now, Leuchtturm is a German brand, although the actual notebooks are manufactured, I believe, in the Far East somewhere, but uh, they have that German sense of design, heritage, and functionality, which is what drew them, or drew me to them, but primarily, what made me swap from my tried and tested moleskin brand to Leuchtturm is something as simple as the quality of the paper. And yes, I have been using the Leuchtturm standard notebook for quite some time, but ju just recently I moved up to their more luxury model, the Leuchtturm 120 gram. Now, the 120 gram refers to the quality of the paper. My standard Leuchtturm paper is 80 GSM, so grams per square meter. That indicates the weight and the quality of the paper itself. And on the standard model, it's good, right? So 80 GSM is more than adequate for any fountain pen which you're going to use. It's not going to bleed through the paper. It's not going to, you know, become thready where you get little bits of the ink sort of straying away from what you're writing. Uh, the 80 GSM is very good. In comparison, by the way, moleskin is 70 GSM in this standard model. So the 10 GSM extra that you find in the standard Leuchtturm is great. However, 120 GSM paper is what you will find in the Leuchtturm Luxury brand and so 50% greater weight on the paper. Does it make that much of a difference you ask? Well it certainly does. The quality of the paper stock is significantly increased compared to the Leuchtturm standard. As you can imagine it feels very very different. In fact it writes very, very differently as well because it's, it seems to be much smoother. It seems to take the ink a little bit better, uh, in my opinion. And, you know, the quality is definitely significantly improved. As I say, it's not necessary. You know, you can easily get by with 80 GSM. But as I'm on a journaling journey, as I like to call it, I thought I would give this 120 GSM at least one notebook as, a, as an opportunity to give it a try. So far, um, it's working out very well. It's got all the signature things that I like on Leuchtturm. Very much importantly, it has the index page or the, the content page at the beginning. And in hand with that, all pages are numbered. They're paginated, as they say. So it's easy for you to keep track of your work wherever it is within the notebook, as long as you, you know, fill out the contents page. In the back, of course, you've got the bellows pocket. There are stickers in there which they provide for you so you can label your book. You can even got spine stickers on there if you put it into a, into a, a sort of a, a bookshelf so you can identify quite easily. Um, there are two uh, bookmarks within the book so you can keep track of two different spaces in there. There's everything you expect or have come to expect in the Leuchtturm brand, but with significantly better quality paper, 50% higher quality or 50% greater weight. The only downside to this is the book is thicker. It's wider, it's heavier, and there are less pages. In my standard Leuchtturm book, there are let me just check, 250 pages. In my 120 GSM book, let me just check, there are 203 pages. So you're losing about 50 pages and the book is bigger. So it is entirely dependent on whether you like that higher quality paper and whether you, you're prepared to put up with the greater weight for the less amount of sheets of paper. But this 120 GSM Leuchtturm, in conjunction with my uh, Caveco uh, Dia 2, well, it's a marriage made in heaven. This has taken me to journaling Nirvana in the last couple of weeks, and it's an experience I'm keen to continue along. So there we go. I thought I would share those with you today. Just a reminder, this isn't sponsored content. You know, I haven't been paid to talk to you about these products today. They are my own personal choice on my journaling 
mission in life. So there we go. If you have enjoyed it, give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click the old subscribe button. If you'd like to add something to the conversation, do so in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel, you can either buy me a coffee or, or become a patron. And on my patron page, the link to which is in the show notes below, I provide additional videos and there's a dialogue there between me and the patrons, which we simply can't have here on the main channel. So until the next time, enjoy your journaling journey with a good pen and a good notebook or with a biro and an unbranded notebook. It's the same thing, but journaling is a very useful medium to keep you straight in life. So until the next time, take care and I will see you again very soon.